Welcome. After creating these videos using several different computers, now feels like the right time to build a dedicated rig for editing and also for a bit of gaming. In this episode, we'll be using a 16 core 7950X3D CPU and an RTX 4090 for maximum performance and together with heaps of storage and RAM to generate the smoothest productivity experience with minimal slowdowns. We will use the O11 Dynamic Evo case to build a unique custom water cooling loop that will keep the components cool and quiet. Let's build it right here, right now. This is the Vector Network and let's begin. We will build around a 16 core AMD Ryzen 9 7950X3D AM5 CPU. Its high core count can be utilized by many productivity tools for a noticeable performance boost and are the most cores currently available from AMD outside of their Threadripper series. The 3D Vcache version has a lower base clock and operates at a lower power level of 120 watts, which translates to some editing tasks being slightly slower. The trade-off is a boost to gaming performance, making it the balance balanced choice for our editing and gaming rig. To cool the CPU, we have the Watercool Heat Killer 4 Pro AM5 Black Copper Water Block. The black nickel plated copper upper and stainless steel mounting brackets complement the aesthetics of the build. The Heat Killer range of cooling components have been impressive in terms of quality and performance on this channel. For the motherboard, we have the ASUS ROG Strix X670E-E Gaming Wi-Fi. The board is used for its power delivery and connectivity, and is primarily black in color. Let's start by dropping the 7950X 3D into the AM5 slot, followed by four plastic spacers and four metal standoffs for the CPU block. We'll add an Noctua AM5 thermal guard and then apply the Noctua NTH2 thermal paste. Then drop in the Heat Killer Black Copper CPU block, followed by four metal spacers, metal springs, and thumb screws. Tighten in the crisscross pattern to apply pressure more evenly. Now let's grab our fittings. We're using 16x10 soft tubing, so the choice of fitting was primarily between the EK Quantum compression fitting in black or the Optimus compression fittings in satin black, satin nickel, or satin silver. The Optimus and satin silver will be used for this build. The fitting has a clean look and will complement the primarily black components. To match the Optimus fittings, we'll use the EKWB EK Quantum 90 degree and 45 degree torque adapters, 14 millimeter torque extenders, a 7 millimeter extender, a T splitter, and a drain port. Now let's drop an EK Quantum 90 degree torque adapter and a pair of Optimus 16 by 10 fittings into the CPU block, followed by the memory. We're using G-Skill Trident memory sticks. There are 32 gigabytes each, with four sticks for a total of 128 gigabytes. This is for editing. For storage, we'll first remove all the heat sinks. While there are four NVMe slots, we'll only use three of them, as using the bottom left slot on this motherboard will slow down the PCIe lanes for the GPU. We'll use the Sabrent two terabyte NVMe here for the boot drive. A Samsung 2TB NVMe drive is next for content and games. Then an ADATA 4TB NVMe for a total of 8TB of NVMe SSD storage, which is plenty for 4K film editing. But let's add more. Let's double the storage by adding two 4TB Samsung 870 EVO SATA drives, bringing our total storage to 16TB. We'll add four screws with rubber rings onto each drive and then slide each drive into place on the hard drive tray. And a shout out to Debauer for this exceptional case. 
We're building in the Lee and Lee O11 Dynamic Evo in white and using the black model's interchangeable and removable panels, brackets, and I.O. module. After dropping the motherboard into the case, we'll secure it with nine motherboard screws. For the video card, we're using the NVIDIA RTX 4090 Founders Edition. 4090 delivers hands-down flagship performance for gaming and its compute performance along with 24GB of GDDR6X memory is handy for editing. We previously tested and did a teardown of the card in preparation for water block installation. Links are in the description. The Watercool Heat Killer Pro 5 GPU water block will cool the 4090 Founders Edition. This block uses a modular base plate, dual layer inflow, and symmetrical cooling design. For all the details, we previously installed and tested this water block on this channel. Links are below in the description. The Lee and Lee vertical GPU mount is used to better showcase the flow path. On the front of the GPU block, let's drop in a 90 degree torque adapter, an Optimus compression fitting, and an EK Quantum plug. On the back, we'll add another 90 degree adapter, a compression fitting, and an Optimus plug. The water block was designed so that the screws and electric components of the board are not visible, and the connection threads are integrated into the terminal so the block can better appear as a single cohesive unit. Now we can insert the riser cable and secure the vertical mount to the case with five Phillips head thumb screws. Now let's build the reservoir, which is part of the modular heat killer tube series where each part can be interchanged separately. Let's start by securing each strut to the standalone bottom. We'll need both the heat killer basic mount and the universal 120 millimeter fan mount to attach the reservoir to our case bracket. We can first loosen the grips on each side of the mount. Then we can drop in the four anti-vibration screws, followed by securing a pair of universal 120 millimeter mounts with four hex screws. Then we can slide the basic mounts onto two of the reservoir struts. For the top, we'll need a multi-port cover as well as the acrylic inlet downpipe. Flipping the multi-port top over, we can drop in a clear rubber O-ring and then screw in the inlet downpipe. The heat killer tube is made out of glass and the 150 millimeter size fits centered over the motherboard. Next, we can drop in the glass tube. After dropping in another clear rubber O-ring, we can drop in the tube and top together and secure the top to each of the struts with four hex screws. Now, let's tighten the mount grips and then install an Optimus compression fitting. On the other side, we will install a 90 degree torque adapter and a 16 by 10 compression fitting. Next, we'll secure the universal mount to the case bracket using a total of 12 hex screws and metal washers. We could use less, but there are 12 spots and this will be sturdy. By not having the pump attached to the reservoir, we can achieve a cleaner look and also position it horizontal and more in center view, showcasing the container for the liquid. Then we can slide the case bracket into place and secure it with two case screws. Onto cooling, we use two Watercool Heat Killer 360L radiators in the custom loop. These are the large variants that are 48 millimeters thick. We have two sets of fans, three Noctua NF A12 by 25 and three Fantex T30. We have enough room, so let's add another set of Noctua fans. So our first radiator will have a total of six fans in the push-pull setup. This radiator will slide in on the side and the Noctua fans will be set to exhaust the air from the case. The second radiator will occupy the front and the Fantec fans will be set to intake air into the case. Starting with the push-pull radiator, we'll add three Noctua fans here as exhaust, followed by the case bracket and secured by 12 radiator screws.
The Noctua fans are 25 millimeters thick, so we are using 30 millimeter long screws. We use another set of three Noctua fans here as exhaust and secure it with 12 radiator screws. From here, we can drop in an Optimus fitting, a 90 degree torque adapter, and another compression fitting. So now we have a fully loaded 48 millimeters thick radiator with Noctua fans, Chromax Black, and a push-pull setup intending to provide performance while staying quiet. This radiator will go on the side and exhaust air out of the case. For cable management, here's a good time to add a pair of three-way fan splitter cables. Now we can drop the push-pull radiator into the case and slide it into place. For the second radiator, we'll add the three Fantec fans here as intake. We will use 35 millimeter long screws as the Fantec T30 fans are 30 millimeters thick and five millimeters thicker than the Noctua fans. And then secure the case fan brackets with six radiator screws on each side. Next, the water cool heat killer D5 top allows us to separate the pump from the reservoir and have it operate standalone. The Aqua Computer Next D5 pump is equipped with an OLED screen, will track coolant temperature, and has an integrated fan controller. Flipping the D5 top over, we can drop in the black rubber O-ring. The bottom of the pump is the removable control unit that comes right off. And then we can drop in the D5 pump followed by the metal pump bottom and secure by four hex screws. Then we can place the control unit back on. We'll need the heat killer 120 millimeter fan mount to attach the pump top to the radiator, followed by securing a 120 millimeter mount to the pump top with two hex screws. We can secure the pump top with two radiator screws and then add an Optimus compression fitting to the pump top. The T30 fans can be daisy chained and we can then add an extension cable. Let's keep going by adding a 90 degree torque adapter and an Optimus compression fitting. Then a 14 millimeter torque extender, a 90 degree adapter, and an Optimus 16 by 10 fitting. And then another 14 millimeter and a seven millimeter extender, a T-splitter, an Optimus fitting, and a 45 degree torque adapter or a drain port. The drain port has 360 degree movement for convenience. The 14 millimeter torque extender was used to allow for the movement and the seven millimeter extender was used to connect the T-splitter. The other 14 millimeter extender was used to make a short tube bend easier to manage. Water cool heat killer EPDM with 16 millimeter outer diameter and 10 millimeter inner diameter in black will be used in this build for its durability, clean look, and high elasticity that allows for tight bending radii. Let's install the tube runs by starting with the outlet on the push-pull radiator to the inlet on the GPU block. Then the CPU block inlet to the GPU block outlet. Then the CPU block outlet to the reservoir inlet. And then first the inlet for the push-pull radiator because there's still room. Before dropping in the second radiator and securing it into place with four case screws. Now we can connect the run to the outlet on the second radiator. Then from the outlet on the pump.
to the inlet on the second radiator. The last run is from the reservoir outlet to the pump inlet. Next, for the air leak test, we have the barrel leak tester. Attach the tester to an unused port, pump to the green, which is just above half a bar. Leave and come back later. No change in pressure. Terrific. An 850 watt power supply is recommended by NVIDIA for the RTX 4090. This unit is the Dark Power 13 for Be Quiet that comes equipped with a native 12 volt high power cable. Next, we'll drop the PSU into the case and secure it with four power supply screws. Time to connect the pump to save the power and put a jumper on the 24 pin motherboard cable. For liquid, we're using distilled water with Biocide. This is water cooling. To start the pump and the leak test, let's turn on the power supply. In order to fill the loop, we had to flip the build on its side. There will always be trapped air and the air bubbles go away. Let's end the leak test and turn off the power supply. For a fan controller, we'll use the Aqua Computer Quadro. The Quadro will give us access to the Aqua Suite software to configure the custom loop. Keep in mind, the software is not required for operating and the Quadro will start working once powered up. Let's connect the Noctua push-pull fans, the Fantex 30mm fans, ambient temp sensor, internal USB cable, and the Molex connector for power. Let's put the hard drive bracket into place and secure it with the Phillips head thumb screw. There we go. The editing rig for the vector network that produced this video is now complete. We have a Ryzen 9 7950X 3D CPU paired with an RTX 4090 Founders Edition with 128 gigabytes of DDR5 memory and 16 terabytes of SSD storage. A full custom loop with two radiators, nine fans, 150 millimeter reservoir, a D5 pump and black soft tubing. The water cooling components are primarily from Watercool, accessories from Aqua Computer, and the fittings from EKWB and Optimus. Stay tuned as the testing is coming up next. For testing, the water cool heat killer radiator is cooled by six Noctua fans in the push-pull exhaust setup. A second heat killer radiator is cooled by three Fantec T30 fans. All fans are running at a flat 40% speed. The Aqua Computer Next D5 pump is also set to 40% speed. To obtain the results, Cinebench and 3D Mark Speedway stress tests were run with the Lee & Lee Evo case completely enclosed with ambient room temperature at 21 degrees Celsius. Shown on screen are the CPU core, GPU core, and memory temperatures for Cinebench and Speedway benchmarks. During Cinebench, the CPU temperature was 78 degrees Celsius with performance boost overdrive on auto. And during Speedway, the GPU temperature was 49 degrees Celsius and the memory temperature was 50 degrees Celsius. It's possible to further improve temperatures by simply increasing the speed on the fans or pump or leave them at 40% and enjoy the silence. So there you have it. Step by step, we built an absolute workhorse of an editing and productivity PC and also an absolute beast at gaming. We water cooled it so the components are cool and there is enough radiator surface area to run our fans at low speed, making it also very quiet. Like the video by clicking the like button. If this is your first time here, Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. This is the Vector Network. Thank you, and I'll see you at the next episode.